My name is John Brink. I'm the founder, president, and CEO of the Brink Group of Companies. I'm proud to be the presenting sponsor of Peter Slake's Stories of Influence. My autobiography, Against All Odds, is now available on either Amazon or our website, johnabrink.com. I'd like to thank John Brink for being the presenting sponsor for the Stories of Influence. Thank you, John. There are very few people in Canada who are not hockey fans. Now, sometimes, in fact, many times, we might get frustrated with the Vancouver Canucks performance. But I think in our hearts, we're all fans of ice hockey in this great country of Canada. My guest today was born in New Westminster, which is my hometown. And he is a former Canadian professional hockey player. And for 50 seasons, he played for the 15 seasons, he played for the Vancouver Canucks, the Montreal Canadiens, and the Washington Capitals. He's been a color com commentator for the Vancouver Canucks broadcast. And since retiring as a professional hockey player, he has become one of North America's foremost motivational speakers, relating his experience in hockey to business and success in general. Please welcome my guest, Ron Walker. Ron, welcome. Thank you, Peter. Great to be with you. I didn't know you were going to have behind you a picture of the several Montreal Canadian jerseys. Tell us who number two and number five is in number four and what they mean to you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I borrowed this uh, with a little picture from the Hockey Hall of Fame. And if, uh, if your guests or your participants today uh, have ever experienced the Hall of Fame, uh, what they did is they actually replicated the Montreal Forum dressing room. <clears throat> now, this was a few years back. This is before me. But this exact same dressing room, the way it's set up, the way the, 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 uh, the seats are, uh, was, was the, the same room that we uh, dressed in. Uh, now, some of these sweaters and the equipment, it's from an older era. So uh, number two would have been Doug Harvey. You know, so many, if you're a, a younger person and you don't know who Doug Harvey is, please Google him. A brilliant, brilliant player. And then uh, number four over there would have been Jean Beliveau. So, you know, you've got some of the greats that are represented uh, at, that, uh, at that age. And the, the amazing thing, Peter, is that all of those plaques on the wall um, were there when we played. So, so it was, a, it's a replica of the, of the dress room, which is very cool. And I wish you could see just above the plaques because above the plaques were all of the, uh, the faces of every Montreal Canadian who was in the hall of fame and which was quite a few, I should know the number, but you know what I used to laugh at? I'd be dressing in the room. And I'd look up and there was all these eyes staring at you, <laughs> right? Like, and it was, they were, it was haunting. They were almost saying, you better win tonight. <laughs> now, who, who, who did those eyes represent, do you think? Well, there was a number of older players that I had to learn about. You know, it was the, the Howie Morenzes and, and, you know, it was certainly the eyes that I remember were Rocket Richard. You know, he had those burning eyes and, 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 and they looked a little angry and it was almost like, come on, Ryan, you're not playing very well tonight. <laughs> I, I have a picture of the Guy Lafleur, uh, a signed picture by him playing on the ice. Uh, yes. I don't know where I got it, but I'm sure it's uh, worth a lot of money today. And uh, so what, 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 what was the number one experience for you playing for those nine years with the, uh, with the Canadians? Well, uh, you know, I, I think, Peter, I learned so much. So I, I came, think about the contrast. I came from the Washington Capitals, who were an expansion franchise and struggling to win. And we had never been in the playoffs to trade it into, uh, you know, a, an, a, not only an established franchise, but one that won consistently. And before I got to the Montreal Canadiens, over the past 10 seasons, they had won six Stanley Cups. Wow. So, so they, they understood the process of winning. And one thing that I learned, Peter, was, was it's one thing to learn how to play in the NHL, and I, I learned that in Washington. 
I had uh, 38 goals in my fourth season. I had 18 on the power play. But it's another thing to learn how to win in the NHL. So, so most people say, well, you're in the NHL. You're making lots of money. That's what, well, no, you, you're not there to make the money. You're there to win. And, mm-hmm. and what I learned, Peter, is there's a couple of key components uh, around the differences between playing and winning. And, uh, you know, the guy you talked about, Guy Lafleur. Guy was, he taught me most. Guy, have you ever been taught by somebody that doesn't teach you anything? (laughs) In other words, he didn't say anything. He didn't sit me down and say, Ryan, here's the top five things you need to do to be a winner. He he showed me. And I was his, uh, I was fortunate, Peter, to be Guy's roommate for a little while. And Guy Lafleur, I don't know if people know this, uh, Guy would, all of us would get to the rink two or three hours before the game to prepare. Guy Lafleur would be there at 2.30 in the afternoon for a seven o'clock game. Wow. He would have all of his equipment on and he, in his skates on, but he wouldn't have them tightened up. That, mm-hmm. that was his way to prepare. I learned how to be a pro from Guy Lafleur. The other thing I learned from Guy is that you, you, you have to turn your have to's into want to's. Mm-hmm. Right. If I have to go to practice every day, this is going to be a long life. But if I can't wait to get there and and he showed me that he didn't tell me that I just watched him. You know, Guy Lafleur was on the ice 40 to 35 minutes to 40 minutes before any other player for every practice. And you know what was cool, Peter? He didn't have to be there. He was he was one of the top 10 players in the NHL. And then finally, Guy taught me about respect and that you, you, don't, you don't put down fans, you respect fans. I'll tell you how he showed me. Guy Lafleur, can you imagine how many hockey cards he signed as a player? Like mm-hmm. everybody from Quebec, everybody from Canada, from all over the world would send him a hockey card and say, Mr. Lafleur, could you please sign my hockey card? And you know what I watched? I watched Guy after practice, Peter, sit, big smile on his face, sit down in his, in his stall in this dressing room and with a big, you know, he had, it was almost like a, it, was, it wasn't a bucket, it, 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 it was like a bag full of mail. And he would personally sign every autograph. Wow. He didn't have a secretary sign his autograph. He would do that, he'd lick the envelope, he'd put it in the, the mail slot. And so I learned from guys like Larry Robinson and Bob Giney and Guy Lafleur. So it wasn't as much how you played on the ice, although there were some things there. It was more about who we became. And that influenced the playing versus winning. That probably uh, helped. I mean, your skills can only take you so far. But then your mental approach to the game, which is what you're talking about, your mental approach to life and playing for the Montreal Canadiens. What, what one single thing made the Montreal Canadiens such, a, such an icon in the hockey world, not just in Canada, but in the hockey world? Uh, if I could only pick, I would, I'll give you two and then I'll pick one. I, I think the first is history. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always awesome when you can be on a team that has a winning history. And when I, when I was there, Peter, we were so fortunate, you know, um, uh, Jean Beliveau would, would come and, and, and he would, you know, connect with the guys after practice. In those days, you know, uh, Doug Harvey was around and Maurice Richard was around. So we got a chance, you know, when we went to Yvonne Cornway's bar after a practice as a team to get together, they would have all of these amazing players that, you know, that come sit down. Hey, Ryan, how are you doing? So I think that the, the capacity of the history passed on some things. But if I could only pick one thing, Peter, I would, I would give the fans, the Montreal Canadian fans, a lot of credit because I would, I would say that the one thing that differentiates is expectation. The fans' the, expectation. The fans' expectation, the management's expectation, and the players' expectation. Yeah. Uh, when we lost the Stanley Cup in 1989 to the Calgary Flames, and and most most organizations would hold a parade for getting to a Cup final, but not not the Montreal Canadiens. It was the city was in mourning. 
you don't lose. Wow. Wow. Well, let's, let's go back to your beginnings uh, here in this province in New Westminster. Uh, you were born in New Westminster. Was it the Royal Columbian Hospital or? Yeah, yeah, the Royal Columbian. Do you remember the doctor or uh, anything? I mean, obviously it's, uh, do you ever go back and visit them? So, so a great question. So I spent a bit of time in the Royal Columbian over the years. Uh, as a kid, I, I was chasing a marble down a, a hall that had <laughs> hardwood floors and I was in my socks and I slipped hard into the very locked uh, bathroom door. So I spent a little bit of time with a concussion in the Royal Columbian Hospital, but I don't know the people as well there. Um, you know, I've spent lots of time in hospitals over the years, and I, I do know some of, uh, I, blew, I blew a knee, my right knee as a 16-year-old in Kamloops. You know the two doctors there, Dr. Smiley and Dr. Polson. Uh, they both did a brilliant job on putting my knee back together, and, you know, I'm always so thankful to have played a thousand plus games in the NHL, and I give them a lot of the credit. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you become a professional hockey player, do you think it will go on longer than it does? But obviously, as you get older, some of the skills just naturally disappear because of age. Not that you still don't have the skills, but uh, yes. how, how do you begin? And when do you know it's, it's time to hang them up? <laughs> Oh, that's such a good question. You know, I was 15 seasons, my second season with the Vancouver Canucks. And, uh, and I only played 22 of 82 games that year and I wasn't injured. So that, that tells you a lot, right? Like I, my legs are starting to go. I'm not fast enough. And you know, what's funny about that is I went to Pat Quinn, who I love. Uh, and I, uh, Pat passed way too early. He's a wonderful man, wonderful coach. And I said, so Pat, another season? And he looked at me and said, no, Ryan, not with this team. <laughs> and, and you know what I'm, I'm trying to say there, Peter, is once you're a player, you never want to stop playing. Yeah. And so I think I was, I had to be forced out of the game because I loved it so much. And, uh, and then, you know, I think what you and I have done in, in our lifetime is, is, and I have such affinity with you, Peter, because I think we're both curious and I think we love principles. So I, I, I began to look back at the, the principles that worked in professional sport and tried to really you know, help people in, in what I call professional life and professional business. And so that was sort of starting of the transference of those principles. To, to the career that you're now in. Correct. So, so when, when did you realize you could be the speaker you are and have the wisdom that you do to impart to audiences literally all over North America on, on a regular basis. W when did that at a, aha moment come for you? Well, that's a, it was gradual. It, I, I didn't have an aha moment, uh, but what happened to me is it, because it was a gradual movement, I, um, as a, a captain at the NHL level and an assistant captain, what would happen is, is, is uh, teams would often say, okay, you're the captain. So you go and speak to the, you know, the gathering that we've got for this charity or, you know, you go speak to the, uh, you know, the season ticket holder party or, and so what happened to me, Peter, is I got a little bit comfortable with being in front of people. And, and I sort of, you know, I botched it, you know, many times and I wasn't prepared other times, but I got to a place where, you know, I could stand up in front of people and hold their attention and have some fun and enjoy it. And I think that that enjoyment allowed me then to go, okay, I'm, you know, I'd love to do some, you know, how do I add value to people? How do we help charities? How do we do different things, you know, and and then that gradually moved into, you know, taking a, a master's degree in leadership business at Trinity Western University that really launched, I, I had a lot of ideas around leadership, but it was good to go back and sort of, you know, spend time really understanding the foundation of leadership and high performance so that 
you know, I could have maybe a better, I don't know, foundation of, of what I should, you know, talk about. I think the other thing, Peter, that, that you do brilliantly is something that I've learned from you and, and that I started to capture early in my hockey career. And that is, I am one of the few, I'm a weird duck. I was journaling as an NHL player. Wow. So I would write down all those stories, you know, and I don't know why I did it, Peter, but I would, you know, if I hadn't have written down those stories, I wouldn't have remembered any of those stories. And so I've been, you know, like you, I believe in the power of stories connected to principles that work, whether you're, you know, a single mom or you're a CEO of a company. And I, I think that that's what's really uh, allowed me, you know, to get up in front of people, number one, be comfortable. But then the, the word that I, is always in my mind when I take the stage, it's not about Ryan, it's about value. Mm. How can you and I, Peter, add value to people? And sometimes that's the keynote. Sometimes it's training. Sometimes it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching and executive. Would you say that the majority of your speeches, though, are uh, about leadership and the qualities of leadership and what most business people need desperately is to understand what leadership is? Because if they don't practice it, if they're not they don't have to just talk about it they have to actually do it they have to be that leader yes so so the answer is yes <clears throat> i think most of what we do is uh is centered around leadership development thing i love about leaders and john maxwell said this uh, that leaders are learners and so you and i love having you know a room full of of people that that want to get to the next level they want to take themselves to the next level so that's that would be the first piece. But I think secondly for me is that there's so many um, parts of leadership, right? Like, and one of the big areas that we've been fixated on and, and sharing th these days, especially during COVID, is, is around the six mindsets of leadership and, and how the, these mindsets, you know, will actually, uh, you know, decide the type of uh, leadership style and performance that we have and then that sort of is the indication of the culture, uh, you know, that, that each of the organizations have. So we're really fixated on mindset only because that's the foundation of leadership. Yeah. Uh, and and you, you would say the majority of, of your presentations and speeches are based on these six principles. A big chunk of them right now. And, and it's not, you know, if people want to talk about you know, uh, leadership and credibility or leadership and communication. I mean, we, we do all of those. But I think right now, most people are fixated on resilience. Uh, how do we get re stay resilient as a leader? Uh, how do we help our people stay resilient? You know, how do we help our families stay resilient? And so we're doing a lot of work with these six mindsets uh, around resiliency. So how, how do we develop resiliency? And you'd like this, Peter, we, we've just developed another little model we call the three R's. And this is a good hockey illustration that plays out into a cognition illustration. <clears throat> the first R, anytime we're in negativity and we catch ourselves, so we're aware, we recommend that we do the first R, which is we recover our thinking. And we, we recommend that we use a trigger. So my favorite trigger right now when I catch myself being negative is go to neutral. And, and we, we call the neutral zone a place where we are either mindful or we're in the flow zone. Uh, go to neutral. So we recover our thinking. You know what's cool about that in hockey? When you don't have the puck, what do you do? <laughs> you recover the puck. Number two is we regroup our thinking. And that's the brainstorm. That's the quick where are we? Where are we going to go? What's our next action? How do we take next steps? And in the world of hockey, when you, when you recover the puck, if you're in the neutral zone or the defensive zone, you regroup the puck. You have a, a process to regroup it. So you might pass defenseman to defenseman. You might pass D to winger, or you might skate with the puck. But you have a plan. You, you fixate, you look up ice, and you make a decision on the plan that you're going to utilize. 
The number three R is then we reattack. And I, I love that idea. So we regroup our thinking, we re, I'm sorry, recover our thinking, regroup our thinking, and we take next action. We reattack. And for me, uh, Peter, that has been the essence of the what I call the inner resource of resilience. Uh, Viktor Frankl talks about a space, right? That space that we have in our brain, like between, you know, uh, uh, the idea of you're you're stimulated and there's then you're going to take next action. There's a space, and I think that that space is where we grow our resilience. If all we do in life is react, then you know we're we're at the at the throes of of life. Yeah. But if we can not react, if we can respond correctly, if we can make the space wider so that we take the action we desire instead of the action that we've sort of reacted towards, we've got a chance to stay resilient. One last question. Do you take unsigned hockey player, your hockey player card to your presentations and do you sign them for your guests? <laughs> Great question. You know, I'm a, I've, I've learned from you uh, about this, Peter. I, I don't take hockey cards very much anymore. I'm an old guy. Uh, no, nobody remembers me. Uh, but you know what I do love signing is our books. And, uh, and I think like you, uh, you know, I, I've, our latest book's called Hungry. Our next book will be called uh, Breakout. But like you, I love to, I love to give away books because I think it's a way, instead of looking at a hockey card, which is me, uh, it's a way to add value to people's lives. Now, you know what's on the table is uh, I give away a lot of books and so do you, Peter. And you know what we know about that? A lot of people will never read those books. Yeah. But you know the good news? They have a choice. And, and the people that move on in life will read the book and they'll get something from it. And then they'll go and they'll devour another book. Uh, you are my hero, hero, Peter, because uh, for many reasons, but um, I'm trying to always catch up to you. I'm, I only read 44 books last year, so I'm behind you. But my goal is to get to your, your goal of, of a book a week. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit behind in 2021, so I'm hoping to catch up. Well, you have done a wonderful job uh, this morning, and thank you so much for being on this uh, broadcast. We appreciate it. We've run out of time, really, unfortunately, not your fault, my fault. Uh, we should have scheduled more time. But I wish you all uh, the best in, in, in your career and what you're now doing and the impact you are having on a different team, business teams, uh, which might be a little longer than uh, uh, playing uh, hockey for the Montreal Canadiens or the Vancouver Canucks. God bless you, Ryan. Thank you so much. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you, Peter. Hi to Kay for us.